She's just a good staunch little boat. A great little boat. Wow. That's very nice. Uh, it's quite a nice little package. It's, it's really a kind of a worry-free boat to drive. Hi there, this is Captain Koo and my old sailing buddy Randy. Join us as we travel hither and yon as we look for some great deals on classic boats and learn a little with each one. Hey everybody. <laughs> I am digging myself out of the bilge here and having some fun. Captain Q is off scouring the land for their next good deal on a classic boat. But I wanted to let you guys know that we are going to be at the Annapolis Boat Show October 14th, 15th, and 16th. That's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. On Friday, we're going to be participating in the YouTube booth, which is from 1 to 2. And then we're going to jump over, and from 3 to 4, we'll be at the Edson booth. So we can get a little bit more face time that way. On Saturday, we're holding a, a special Q&A session with ourselves and a few other specialists about what it means to own an old boat. And so we're going to have a rigging specialist, a fiberglass specialist, a sailmaker specialist, uh, and then Captain Q and I will be there as well. And we're calling it uh, Old Boats, New Owners. So it's for anyone that's considering buying an old boat. So we're gonna do that from two to 3.30 on Saturday at the Edson booth. Um, right after that, Captain Q and I are gonna jump over from 4.30 to five to be at the YouTube booth. And then we'll be back on Sunday from 10 a.m. to noon at the Edson booth. So come on by, say hi. Last year, we bumped into a lot of you in Annapolis. It was a wonderful experience and we can't wait to meet more of you out there and have even more fun this year. So hope to see you there. Hey, hey Randy, what are you doing over there? Captain, I was just looking at a little, what, little varnish. What are you doing? You know how I like varnish. You do like varnish. And look at this, we're in powerboat heaven here, aren't we? Look, look so, around here, there's, there's powerboats everywhere you look. And I think that's partially because there must be a low bridge around here somewhere, don't you think? This is all they can get in here. A sailboat wouldn't make it in here. Uh, anyway, I'm sitting right behind a boat called the Shark Taxi. That one's really equipped to, to go fishing, but I don't think I need to go fishing. You know, I gotta tell you that. You don't I, really like seafood, so. <laughs> I'm not a great seafood fan. Oh, I like shrimp cocktails, though. Uh, we're here to look today at a 22-foot um, uh, Weber's Cove boat built up in Bernard, Maine. And this boat's uh, 22 feet uh, basic hull, about 25 feet overall with a swim platform. So a power boat? Ah, uh, yeah. You know, a little while ago we did another powerboat, didn't we? We did. And I know, I know what you're saying. You're on a kick of some kind. Th this just sort of fell into our lap and I said, what the heck, it's kind of cute because there's a couple of interesting things about it. Some people refer to it as a poor man's uh, Hinkley picnic boat. And uh, when you see it, you might agree a little bit. Give me a little leeway here. All right. Uh, but she's strongly built. Anything built in Maine is going to last forever, okay? It's a great build, good design, strong. The other thing she has, she has a jet drive. Ooh. Yep, and uh, you don't have to go to the airport for it. <laughs> it. It comes right out of its transom. And why do we want a jet drive on this boat? Your guess. Maybe no propeller. No propeller. You're not gonna catch lobster pots, are you? And the other really nice thing, you can take a jet drive boat with a shallow draft, basically, probably the draft on this boat is like, you know, maybe a foot, two feet at the most, and just roll it right up on the beach. You do have to worry about sucking up a little sand maybe, but I think it, they've got filter system for that. It's not a problem. A great little boat. We're not going to promise you a lot of people. This is a boat for two people to go out. Have a little bottle of Frisianette. Mm. I will tell you, it has a teeny tiny little galley. Okay. And it's just big enough. <laughs> <laughs> to warm up some Dinny Moore, I bet. A one can galley? One can, because it's just four people. So you get the big can, four people, a little heat, you're all set. She's just a good, staunch little boat. So let me show you where it is. I'll tell you what, why don't you follow me? All right. We'll go this way. So, Rande, ta-da, as we like to say. Aha. Uh -huh. There is, look at this, look at the transom. This is the Grace O'Malley. Now, do you think that's the owner's wife? Possibly. Do you think it's his girlfriend? Uh... I'm going to give you choice number three here. His mom? No. I'm going to give you four choices. You don't have it? I'll, no. I'll, that is a 16th century Irish lady pirate. Oh. Oh, she was notorious all over the western coast of Ireland and uh, the North Atlantic, uh, ranging far and wide, hither and yon, I think they used to say back then. Huh. And uh, she, was, she was a terror on the water. She did get introduced to Elizabeth I at some point, so... Somewhere or another, she, she uh, garnered a little 
uh, affinity to the Royals. Notice there is a little Irish cast to this boat. Yeah. A little There's Irish theme, maybe a green hue, here and yeah. there. Randy, if you look straight down there, you're going to see what's known as a Hamilton uh, jet drive. And what that does, that sucks up water from an intake underneath the hull and blows it out this piece right here. And if you look closely, uh, this, this piece right here will move. Uh, and you see here's, here's a, a device that will suck it back into the boat. It's going to push the boat backwards. If you push it all the way out like this, it's going to deflect the water coming out of the jet here and push it down and forward and make the boat back up. And if you notice, that's where he turned the boat off here because uh, this has been pushed out all the way and he backed into the slip probably, turned the boat off and just left it there. But that's the jet drive and there is uh, nothing under the boat to drag in the water, to catch on lobster traps, uh, anything of that nature. It's really kind of a perfect answer to a gunk holding um, boat owner. Now, the difference is that it doesn't have the characteristics that a propeller might have. And we know that propellers, given their design, whether left or right-handed props, will let the boat prop walk when you're backing and maneuvering the boat a little bit. This doesn't quite do it the same way. It's a little trickier, obviously. He got it in the slip. It's not undoable. It's just a little different. But boy, having the ability to go up to a, a beach or up a really long, narrow estuary, a river, uh, with it would be great fun. Kind of like a glorified African queen almost. Oh yeah. Come on up here a little bit. I'll just show you. We don't have a very busy foredeck on here. Uh, there's no anchoring program uh, set right now, but uh, they just have a little platform there ready to uh, anchor the boat. The present owner uh, bought the boat uh, just to motor around by himself and he probably just lives in the slip when he's not, you know, offshore. But she's got a nice flared bow to her and you'll be able to see that from the dock. So this boat's going to hit a wave and just blow the water either side and keep you dry. What water does get to you will get to this armor plate glass with its own windshield wiper. Um, and that's kind of nice. We don't see too many of those. There's actually one on either side. Up on deck, we've got radar, GPS, and our powerboat steaming light at the very top there, all around white light. And directly in front of you is a spotlight. And again, we haven't seen one of those on most of our sailboats, do we? No. But that can be changed directionally, and pretty nice thing when you're trying to find those red and green uh, marks coming into a harbor late at night. Notice too here, we'll see this inside, there are two opening hatches that only open one way, but this boat's only going one way, right? Forward. Blow the air in, you'll be cooled off inside. You want to tell me about the hull? What, what does she look like underneath? There's no real keel. There's a, a bit of a keel to it, I should say, uh, but it's long, the whole length of the boat, and normally those used to fare into an aperture where you'd find the prop living and then the, a rudder hung on the back of that. We don't have that here. So it's just a, a directionally stabilizing a uh, bit of hull form, of keel form under the under the boat. So I'm going to step aboard. You're welcome to follow me. I shall. That's the spirit. We love the subscribers. Yeah, more subscribers means that we're going to get recommended to more people, and so that helps spread the love and spread the word about old classic boats and what we're doing. So every little bit helps. Thanks again. Well, Randy, come on aboard. Uh, thanks. And uh, have a seat here. Now recently we just did a 30-foot uh, powerboat, didn't we? Yeah. And that was built by a, a fisherman, uh, a, a, a man that built boats for the fishing industry, and she was quite plain Jane. This is a step up from that considerably. Look at the ceilings here, all finished in, in, uh, in bright mahogany and so forth. Uh, we have a molded deck underneath there, and this is all uh, teak, solid teak under decking in the cockpit. I think uh, this could use a little undoes it right now, would you say? Yeah. We I actually just saw a piece of some, someone was using um, uh, vinegar to clean the teak. That could, that could be. I would understand that. It's a really simple, pour it on, very light scrub, and it takes care of kind of any 
growth or do you market. think they like to scrub it or with a, maybe a sponge or something right sponge would be way better i yeah. think the person i saw was using a, a so very soft brush yeah well even a brush will tend to pull up that soft meat so we've got to be careful with that a little bit yeah but um this is quite nice back here it would be fun uh, if you're driving the boat and you've got a, some friends a couple maybe even the grandchildren sitting back here bubbling and so forth and you go to find a little beach and there's a really nice big uh, uh, stern platform back here to go swimming from so uh, this 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 what this is this boat isn't much more than just a day uh, friendly boat the last boat we saw only had one seat for the helmsman didn't it yeah and here we are seeing two which I think is a friendlier approach and uh, the headroom here isn't the isn't the tallest but you don't really need that because you're going to be in here driving the boat, excuse my back, sitting down. Now I have plenty of headroom, don't I? Well, uh, Randy, we've just had a little incident here on the boat. <laughs> Randy managed to find anything that's below the, uh, below six foot one inch uh, anywhere he goes. I'm testing the boundaries of and, that. And his boundaries have been tested and found uh, wanting. Uh, so back to the boat, we have a, a C80 series here, which is gonna have radar and GPS and all that uh, molded into it. Uh, we have a, uh, a, a bow thruster here as well, ah. uh, and that's pretty nice. And uh, I would think that that would help with the uh, walking of the jet. You know, the... Well, I, I would think so. This is something <laughs> we've never seen before, have we? This is an Edson drink holder. You're eyeballing that for yourself, I know. Yeah. Put your screwdriver away. We have a Seastar uh, Teleflex system, hydraulic system. Again, the same we had on the other power boat. It obviously works on boats this size. Separate engine throttle comp controls right beside me with the helm. Uh, I've got the kill switch for the diesel right here when you're ready to shut it down. It's a 145 horsepower diesel. Uh, carries about 60 gallons of fuel, I think, something in that neighborhood. What would the range be on this boat? I don't know. Uh, it's like everything, though, especially with power boats. If you go on a cruise range, which is usually, oh, what's it say for tachometer say, series, maybe around uh, 20, uh, 19 to 2100 RPM, uh, you're probably going to get the best um, uh, miles per gallon, so to speak. If you crank it up to full speed and you're up on a plane, this boat will get up on a bit of a plane, and you're doing 25 knots, I think we've heard. Uh, you're going to be probably burning all of a sudden, maybe double. Nice set of gauges here for everything. There's also a little gauge here too that shows where your jet drive is pointing and you have to learn how to read that. Very simple, uh, nice little uh, bubble compass in front of us here and uh, very legible from this helm position. Now across from me, right behind you Randy, you're going to see another Hudson drink holder. And you're moving carefully. You still aim nope, for it. Still hit it. it. Yep. You have to move a little carefully there. We have another seat. We've got another uh, a co-helmsman seat here, and this will this will fly up. And I won't put it up right now, but there's a bar for it to support it once it's up in the air. Uh, then on this side, we're going to stow this seat away because we need to take a look at the engine room, right? You like engine rooms, don't you, Randy? Sometimes. <laughs> Well, if they've got enough headroom. <laughs> <laughs> That's the key. That's the key. Very simple with you, isn't it? So, um, one mighty heave. The captain just threw that up in the air. Now, how about accessibility? Very nice. If I put this in your lap, it wouldn't be any closer, would it? No. Look at this Yanmar. This is just a beauty. Uh, she's not brand new the boat is what a 2008 i think we said so it's about uh, 16 years old but it's it's been kept clean i think the hours on this are only about 300 hours so where's my usual stuff your usual stuff well uh down below here i think we're seeing uh, uh, maybe in for, for a fuel here. filter and okay there you go there's your uh, fresh water, your uh, raw water intake, right there. Yeah. And the uh, silver piece. It almost looks like a hot water heater, but I don't know what. Oh, that is your potable water tank. Okay. That's what it is exactly, in stainless steel. So uh, that's all right handy. And 
Oh, belts are nice and tight. And it, I mean, you, you just got to have the owner's manual on this and sit down and have a heyday, wouldn't you? You could get to all the injectors. Um, the oil dipstick is right here. Oil fills right. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, oil fills right here on top. Uh, and this may be. Is this turbocharged? This may be turbocharged, but I'm not certain. But down here, here's the meat of the of the jet drive part right here. And that's that's going to drive another piece uh, under the aft deck. Now, coming aft, this is going to drive. This is your drive shaft, and it's going right back to the jet where the uh, uh, jet propulsion unit is okay. underneath the batteries in the box back here, and out the trail into the car. So this is actually a drive shaft for the Hamilton jet drive. Okay. Uh, Here's tank. That must be your tank, right? Your diesel tank. Yep, there we go through the little primary fuel filter to catch the rocks and stones. That's and a little so baby on. one. Yep. This almost looks like a, a backup. Uh, it would be interesting to know what it is for, um, you know, remember the old Volkswagens? Yeah. The, you could run out of gas and then throw a little lever down by the transmission and suddenly you'd have gasoline to get you home with. It was pretty clever. And over here is your exhaust line. And we've got two more lines here. Another Later tank. On. That's a, a feed line. Yeah, another tank. Another tank. This has got something to do with the jet propulsion. Okay, Randy, let's take a look back here. What's, the, what's between that engine and the, uh, and the drive, okay? Yep. We have a nice dry battery box. Uh, and there's one more battery forward, I know. And you can see beyond this, there's the, the propulsion unit itself. Can you see that on there? Yep. And that does all the work. It's an interesting rig. And uh, maybe not for anybody, but for everybody. But if you're in uh, shallow water, shallow rivers, shallow creeks, you want to get up to a, uh, a nice uh, beach sometime, this is ideal. Let me take a look forward here. Now, Rande, I want you to be careful. There's a couple of low spots in the overhead here. Oh, there's a four, There's an impression from my forehead right here. <laughs> this is lovely little uh, bright work on this boat too, by the way. Oh, uh, sort of on that hair shelf look. Now I'm just gonna slide down into the companionway here. It's a little cozy. And I'll be glad to invite you down here, Randy, but only if you promise me to bend down the whole way. <laughs> no two ways about it, it's minimal, but it's uh, very nicely done. Look at the countertops in green uh, coral and the shiny sink. And there's hot and cold water on that sink. I can see that from here. And you know what? Do you see the one burner stove there? Oh, yeah. And what's right next to it? Oh. Uh, that's a month's worth of feeding on this <laughs> boat. So. Uh, we've got storage beneath that, just random storage, nothing to really look at there. Uh, here's your battery number one, probably a starting battery. Uh, and then there might be the lighting battery aft. All the lighting has been updated to LED on board. we got a 110 volt from shore power. And there's, if you come down here, there's a really nice 12 volt system. Big bilge pump switches. There seems to be four bilge pumps here. So either this boat wants to sink or it just wants to make certain it never sinks. <laughs> we got locker storage under here. Let's see what this is all about. Icebox? That is, that could be your icebox. It is your icebox. It's pretty, so it's, pretty it's convenient. Uh, and it gives you, instead of carting around a big cooler, this is bigger than most coolers you're going to cart around. And uh, I can see there's some uh, old frozen ice cubes in there. And a uh, nice little drain hole too. Yep, you see that from there? Yep, okay. So, that's very nice. And really tight seal to that too. Uh, there's a small library here, just big enough for boat instructions and uh, maybe a chart. We have the, uh, what do we call this? Uh, the Firefly, Firefly Commode. Firefly Commode. Randy likes this particularly because <laughs> when he's asleep at night and, and his, his date is an adjacent bunk, uh, and Randy has to use the commode. 
he can sort of be on the commode and chatting with her. And it's nice to have that sort of relationship, don't you think? Yeah, it's the love toilet. The love toilet. Exquisitely designed. It's right there, and if it, and it slides around a little bit, I think I'd probably wedge that down <laughs> some, don't you think? <laughs> I'm going to just stretch out here a little bit to give you an idea that if you're careful, you don't have to hit your head everywhere. And uh, my feet will go if I was up a little further. Uh, Randall? Yeah. That's it, baby. That's all you get. 22 feet, 25 overall. Uh, Weber's Cove, both built in Maine by Maine craftsmen, able to go offshore. You can see how the hull is shaped right from being down here. This is going to throw the water every which way you want to. Uh, Hamilton Stern jet drive that will take you into the shallowest of waters. Uh, it's quite a nice little package. So we hope our fans have excused us for uh, going to the dark side a little bit here. But this was an opportunity we just couldn't pass up. And I know they all are going to wish you and send you a note, maybe down here at the bottom. Just send Randy a note and hope that his head gets better. I'm going to go uh, leave you to a siesta, but I'm going to go do a concussion protocol. Please, please do it. <laughs> I'll call you from the ER. The ER. Yep. Thanks, pal. All right. We'll Have see a swell you. day. Randy. Yes. I'm so sorry about your head. <laughs> Which part? <laughs> no, I mean the little head below deck that's moved around all of that. Oh, that yeah. one. No, but also your own head, because I know underneath your Captain Q hat, uh, you have a number of indentations. They're all different depths because yeah. you managed to find everything that was lower than six foot one that was six and a half inch, six and a quarter inch, six and three inches, six and <laughs> five and ten inches. I had inches. to sample everything. You got everything, and you were nearly knocked out at one point, and it was incredible that you're still filming because any other normal man would be waiting for the EMT to show up. It's just that simple. So my, my hat's off to you. Uh, anyway, it was a difficult boat. It was at only 22 feet, and one of the smaller boats that we've been on, and we're kind of two big guys in a way, and we don't fit in the 22 footers anymore like we used to. So uh, we found it to be an interesting boat. She has a Hamilton stern drive, which means that you can go take that boat into a puddle and drive the boat around because it just needs almost no water. So it's a environmentally kind of a sound boat, uh, not built for the big guys, uh, but beautifully handcrafted for what she is by, by wonderful Maine craftsmen. She's not very old, just a 2008. We're probably not going to put this on our want list for Christmas, but uh, somebody a little shorter with maybe just a partner or two and one or two kids and one or two friends that want to go out for an evening. Uh, we know it floats because we were sitting in it in the water, right? Yeah. And we know that it was built by Maine craftsmen. So I'm gonna take it up to 15 right there. Okay. And we know that she was beautifully put together. I'm gonna to give her another, another five right there. So we're gonna take her to 20 and uh, know that when you go offshore, that bow is gonna carve out every big wave coming at you. You're gonna be dry and solid in that boat. Uh, so I'm giving her another three points. We're going to 23 for this power boat. All right. We thank you for watching. We apologize for going to look at power boats, but every once in a while it's nice to think, gee, maybe we just go down and step on board, turn the key, don't worry about the sails, don't worry about the storms, just go to sea for a while. And that's what you could do in this Weber's Cove 25, okay? All right. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episode. A little bit early. That's pretty cool. Previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs> Randy? I'm quiet. <laughs> I'm quiet because I've already hit my head three times. I caught it on the side of this thing. Oh, that made, that's why you've been so grumpy. That, that mother, mother yeah. That, that would. <laughs> <laughs> okay.